hey everyone welcome again on new tutorial and uh, in this tutorial we will going to create an infinite scroll pagination and uh, we're going to fetch the data from the api we're going to make an api call fetch the data by page by page and once all the data like suppose we fetch 10 or 15 data at a time and when we come to the last of the screen then we will make another api call and the pagination will happen like this it will be an infinite scroll pagination so instead of asking all the data from the endpoint we are going to ask data uh, in a small chunks like 10 or 15 and whenever we will go in the bottom of the page then we will make another API endpoint and ask another set of data so this is an infinite scroll pagination and we are going to implement it in this video so please watch the video very carefully and don't forget to subscribe the channel like the video and share the video to your friend so let's start writing the code before i will start writing the code let me give you an overview of this project the first thing is the main.dart file in the main.dart file we have a main method along with that in a main method we are rendering my app widget which is a custom widget and inside the my app widget you can see that in a material app widget, we have provided our home as a pagination without ktex, which is a custom widget. Okay, if I will go on that custom widget, then you will find that it is a stateful widget. And inside the stateful widget, you will see that we have a state class. And in the state class, I just have the app bar. Here you can see the app bar infinite scroll pagination. And I use this naming convention pagination without ktex because I wanted to create a separate video with the same thing like we are creating an infinite scroll uh, pagination right with stateful widget and I wanted to do the same thing with the state management tool called getx and that is the next video okay and uh, we're going to do the same thing on the next video but that will have a getx okay so don't worry about that so this is a kind of overview of our project as of now we don't have anything we will start writing the code but before writing a code let's see what will be the our endpoint so we are going to use a api endpoint right so whenever you work with the rest api with the flutter we need to add this http dependency on our package okay so in a popspec.yaml file you have to add that dependency after cuperkino icon inside the dependency tag okay so you have to add it over here because we need to work with the network uh, call okay and the next thing will going to be what will be the endpoint okay so for us the endpoint will going to be this pokemon endpoint which is an open source api endpoint and it have a two parameters first thing is the limit and second thing is the offset so let me show you uh, what exactly it have let me beautify it if i paste it here and beautify it then you will file that it have a count number of uh, element or number of object it have okay it have a 1154 uh, object okay or data or you can say a row in a database related to the pokemon it have a next and uh, it have a previous and it have a result inside the result we have all the object as of now we just got 10 because if you see over here then i have provided a limit limit as a 10 so at a time whenever we will hit this endpoint it will give us a 10 element only okay not more than that and um, that's why we do the pagination right we don't want to make a very time consuming uh, api call right if you ask all the data like we have 1154 data at a time then it will be a very time consuming and we need to show a loader for 5 second 10 second on our app which is a bad user experience that's why at a time we ask 10 or 20 uh, data at a time and after scrolling to the end we will make another api endpoint and ask again 10 or 20 data so that's that's uh, that's why we are using the infinite scroll view uh, infinite scroll pagination right so so this is a thing that we are asking only 10 element and here we have offset as a zero okay 
and if you see that in a nix what we have that we have object as a tin so if i will change it here and make the object as a tin then we will get another tin element so so right now this this was the first tin element and when i put the object as a tin then i will get another tin element so now we got a 20 element okay and you will find that the next is changed the next is changed and uh, next are saying that offset is now become 20 so what does that mean the meaning of this thing is that uh, whenever we will make a first api call offset will going to be a zero okay so that is suppose a first page okay this is suppose a first page and if if you want another 10 element so first we had 10 now we are asking another 10 element then we have to make the offset as a 10 okay now we have a 20 and now if we want another 10 element then we have to make this object as a 30 so that that is your pagination handle by a backend like this way like this is a way to ask a 10 10 element at a time okay so that's why it will be infinite scroll okay so first we will show 10 element here then when we scroll to the bottom then we will ask another 10 element then after showing another 20 element then we have to make another api call and it will become a 30 so that is we just had to change this offset value from 0 10 20 30 like that so this is a way of this api some kind sometime it happened that some backend developer handle this pagination with help of the page value so suppose the first page was the zero so we will make api call with help of this page zero and ask 10 element then to ask another 10 element we have to provide a page as a one then again ask another 10 event we have to provide as a two or three so that can also happen on a, a pagination from the back end side for, for our case we are handling with the offset okay so now you got a basic idea that how this thing are working how we need to make an api call and what is our base api so let us start writing the code so this is our base api and um, we just need to bother about this result we need to show all the result i mean we will going to show the data of this result okay and uh, this result consists two things i mean each of the object if you see it have a name and it have a url okay so we need to show this name and url here okay and uh, let's do that and uh, first this thing what we need to do first i'm going to create a model class so that's a base suggestion i can give that whenever you work with the api with the flutter first create a model class then uh, then work with that so what is the fundamental of the model class and why we use the model class and all you can find the link of that video in the description that you can understand that why i su i suggest always to use a model class okay so uh, i'm going to use a quick type okay so with help of the quick type what we can do that we can create a model class with help of this object only so so the object which we are getting from the api i mean this is a json data this is a response we are getting from the api just use that and what you need to do is okay generate code now just go on a quick type you will find this uh, website link in the description it's taking time i have a very slow internet connection as of now and uh, after copying the response you are getting from the api you have to paste on a playground okay sorry it is taking time so till that let's go here until it will fetch the data we will going to create a model class and uh, let me create a call model class you can choose your naming convention i'm just putting it like way model class okay 
and uh, let's go and this is a playground of the quick type here you have just to put the data you got okay or you can use this data also basically both are same so don't worry it is just a pretty fight okay so here you have to choose language so our language is dot and automatically it is created a model class for us what we need to do we need to just copy the code and go and paste it over here so this is a auto generated model class for us which is generated by the quick type and uh, i don't need this thing and this is our class welcome oh let me just change the name of the file i mean the class what i will use is a model class okay so let me just copy it again let it be there so this is our name of the model class and it is giving a error because we have to handle the null safety so let's say that uh, count will be there always so i will put required next will not be there because next can be null for the last uh, element last page so i will put next as a nullable previous as a nullable because you saw that previous can also have a null value okay so i will put as a null and there should be a result so i will put as a required and similarly name will be required and it is also required i will highly suggest to watch that model class related video so basically what it did that it created two separate model class the first class is a super class in the super class we have a count next previous and result so this is our first object you can saw that it's a first object and inside the object we have another list of object so that's why what it did that it is created a first model class that is a super class with with count next previous and result and as result is a list of the object that's why it is created a list of result and it is created a second model class which have a another object definition that have a name and url so it have a name and it have a url so first it is created this this model class okay and then it is created the super model class okay and use this model class on a super model class so this is our first model class okay this is our first model class and with help of this first model class it is created the super model class with which is using the first model class okay so yeah we just created a model class here and now what we need to do we need to go on a pagination ktx file and uh, here we are going to write our api call so as you know that every stateful widget comes with the init state i mean init state method so whenever we will load this uh, this custom widget i mean this stateful widget at the same time this init state method will run okay so any kind of uh, mount or initialization thing we wanted to do that we can do here so any any thing which is required at the time of initialization of this uh, page we can write over here okay so i'm going to create a method called void fetch data and this fetch data method i'm going to call here so whenever this page is initialized i'm going to call this method and fetch the data from the internet i mean from the rest api endpoint and it will going to be a async and await okay it will going to be async and here we're going to use a http package to make a network call and uh, 
here we have the HTTP package. First, we need to import it like this. Oh, sorry, we have to import it over here as a HTTP. And to make any network call, we need to use a HTTP gate method. We can come here, var response. I'm using the var because the response can be dynamic. Okay, that's why I'm using a var. I don't want it to provide any restricted data type over here. So that's why I'm using a var response. And let's make a HTTP dot gate. And here I need to use a await. That's why I use async and await because it's a asynchronous call. Okay. So any API call is asynchronous call. We have to wait till we will get the response from the internet. Okay. And we have to provide the URL. And what will be our URL? So our URL will going to be this. This is our endpoint. We are asking a 10 data each time. Okay. So let me call this and uh, string can't be assigned to oh we have to use a uh, uri dot pass uri dot pass and provide the okay so now we got the data so this response we are getting after making an api call okay and uh, we created a model class and we need to use this model class after making an API call. So basically the funda of using a model class is map the data which we got from the internet into a object model. Okay, so instead of using, I mean, like we have a count, right? So basically to access the count from the response, we need to use a response. Then we have to use a count to access it, okay? the count value from the endpoint so we have count right in a response so to access it we have to use like this if we don't use a model class but now we are using a model class and if we use a count i mean dot count then also it will work fine because now we are using a model class model class will take this data okay and it will map into normal class related object which a dart de developer easily understand okay so that's why we use a model class and uh, after doing this thing we have to create a class of the model class okay so once i did this thing automatically the model class which we created earlier is imported over here okay and uh, I will create a model class and model class from JSON because it's it's a JSON data so we are using a from JSON okay and uh, I will use JSON JSON dot decode JSON dot decode so basically it's a uh, Whenever we will get the data from the REST API point, it, it, it is a basically a JSON string. So with help of this JSON.decode, we convert this JSON string into normal JSON. Okay. Response dot dot body, I guess. Yeah. Response dot body. And uh, let me log this. First, I will log this uh, response dot body. Okay, print response dot body here. Then I will log print model class. Let me hit the save. So whenever this page is initialized, it will call this page data method. Okay, so basically we will get our data from the internet. Let me rephrase it. So here you can see that this is a data which we are getting from the internet. Okay. And uh, 
and this is our instance of the model class so first print is this body we are getting from the internet so we are getting an api i mean api response from the internet and we converted it into the model class and if you wanted to access the count we just have to use the count and it will work so let me refresh the page so here this is the print statement of this response dot body okay and this is a print statement where we access the count with help of this dot notation we don't need to use that model class or response dot body something count like this because we just converted our json data into normal dart objects with help of the model class okay so now you got the idea that we have this model class uh, thing okay so now this is a time to show the data here <coughs> for that what i will do i will create list of result okay result model class will be imported from here only and that is already imported okay so don't worry about that and uh, i will use a result and here what i will do first it will be a empty uh, then next it will be here i will so we will use our result okay that is we just created and uh, we will con connect with this result with the model class dot result so basically all the data of the api endpoint i mean api response we have here only you can see the response here inside the result only we have all the data so after doing that we have to use the set state okay so now we just set it our state and what we need to do let's add a loading also so let me create a boolean loading as a true and we will set a loading as a false here okay so we will set the loading as a false so first we wanted to show the loading here then we will set a loading as a false okay so now this is time to show the data we got from the api and for that let me go here and uh, in scaffold we have a body as you already know and here we are going to use a list view dot builder list view dot builder we have a two thing it have a first parameter as an item builder which have a build context and second thing will going to be an index it will going to return a widget and for our case we will going to return a list tile okay and as you know that list tile have a leading so we don't need to use a leading we will use a title title will going to be name and subtitle will going to be a url and uh, before the item builder parameter we have a item count as well so let me use item count and item count will going to be result dot length okay and we have an index as well so we will going to use a result and we will iterate based on the index only so index by index result dot index dot the title will going to be a name and we need to wrap it inside the text widget so let me wrap it inside the text widget and we have a subtitle and subtitle we are going to wrap inside the text widget again and it will going to be a url here you can see that we don't need to uh, use that 
comma indicated thing i mean to access a uh, result of url so earlier we had to use a url like this to access it but now we are using the dotted separation to access the data okay so everything is fine now um just need to refresh the page first let me just remove this thing and let me just so here you can see that we can see all the data over here i mean all the 10 result which we got from the rest api endpoint so if we ask the first 10 data and if we beautify okay if we beautify it then you will find babla sur haivasur venusur it will be first element so that we got here okay now uh, we need to create an infinite scroll view so at least it should have a 20 so let me make it as a 20 so it will give a 20 data each time so if i will refresh the page first time we will get a 20 data okay and uh, let me just change the color of the list style so style color okay and uh, let's use a color dot till we will do like this if index is even then we will use color dot till if it is odd then we will use colors dot yellow so we can just differentiate between the two indices okay now the next part will come it's implement the pagination now we are able to make the api endpoint yeah and now it is a time to implement the pagination we haven't implemented a pagination we just did a normal thing over here so let's implement a pagination and for that what we need to do is create a controller so whenever we will scroll from here to there we need to track down the scrolling like we are at the end of the uh, of the screen or not so how we will track this down to track this down we need to create a controller that will going to be a scroll controller so if i will go here and create a new controller and uh, it will be a scroll controller okay scroll controller and after creating this scroll controller what we need to do we need to assign it on a list view dot builder because it's a list view and uh, it should know and i mean it it have one another parameter called scroll controller uh, i mean controller and we will going to assign this scroll controller over here and uh, now whenever we will scroll through this list view everything we will track this down with help of this scroll controller variable and how we will do that thing the first thing we need to do is let me create a new method called void handle next and uh, here we are going to oh, this is a typescript code and what we need to do is we need to use this scroll controller over here dot add event listener and it have a callback function and this callback function will going to be async again and in the callback function we will going to do one thing if position dot max scroll extend is equal equal to scroll controller dot position dot pixel then we're going to make an api call again the phase data api call okay and here we'll getting some 
error what is the error so I need to close it down let me just remove the if condition here first this is the closing basis it is closing basis then why it is giving error oh okay okay so basically what i am doing that i am listening to a event that whenever this is the condition is whenever we will go to the end of this screen then it will basically going to make another api call so this is this is a condition that the max scroll extent okay is is the position dot pixel so basically this is a condition when we will going to be in of our uh, list okay so we will going to make another api call okay and to initialize i mean to listen to this event first we need to initialize this handle next on our init state okay and the next thing we need to change is the offset so initially the offset value was the zero but now we need to change this offset value all the time okay so suppose if i will create a int offset first it was the zero okay i will provide another parameter called offset over here okay and uh, first it was the zero and whenever it will make the changes i mean make the api call i will increase the offset by 20 because now we are asking 20 data at a time so the next time i will ask another 20 data that's why i will increasing the offset as a 20 or we can ask uh, 15 data at a time and i will increase offset by 15 okay and i will provide this offset here so first offset was the zero once we will first time fetch the data offset become the 15 0 plus 15 15 and then again we will pass the offset over here and next time it will become a 30 so that will be the case and uh, yeah everything looks fine now let's see how it will look like okay so to see it in action i have to refresh the page what happened okay so first it will face the 15 data if we go to the end it will again face the 15 data but it is making another 15 data as the same response you can see the bubble should again and again because we haven't changed here so we need to change it like this we have to provide the offset which we are getting from here okay let me refresh the page first we got the bubble sur then last was the bit drill then we got again a bubble sur let me print offset here to see that everything is working fine or not we drill then again we got a bubble sur and offset is all the time zero only why offset is all the time zero let me create another int local offset assign it to the offset plus 15 and let me provide over here offset to a local offset over here change to offset para offset 
so there will be no confusion and uh, let me just use this para offset and refresh the page first the offset was the zero so this is a para offset and uh, next time when i will go into in then offset become 15 and we got the next data that is the pg so between first was the bubble sur then next was the 30 so we will get another data from the nido queen so it's now an infinite scroll view so now if we scroll then we will get a new data okay so now the thing is working fine now we can infinite scroll to our uh, pagination so the purpose of this video is now completed we have implemented the infinite scroll view with help of this HTTP package and the Pokemon REST API endpoint and everything is working fine I know uh, UI is not looking great but yeah we haven't focused on the UI we just focus on the implementation so like this we can implement a infinite scroll pagination please don't forget to subscribe the channel like the video and share the video to your friend and uh, i hope i will create another video with help of the same thing using the getx package okay and i hope you understand everything why i changed in the last minute because all are the offset maybe because of this having the same naming convention everywhere creating a confusion to the code and because of that somewhere we we are losing our state that's why all the time offset was zero earlier but changing the name of the parameter like instead of having offset name here we change the para offset instead of again having offset here we change a local offset so it's now the the variable name is changed and maybe we haven't lose state anywhere so that was the scenario was happening earlier but now it is fixed okay so you will find this whole code link on the video description the github link on the video description so please go there give a star over there and also follow the link uh, github page okay thank you all happy coding see you on the next video